In 1860, the four million American slaves were conservatively valued at $3 billion. That sum was almost three times the value of the entire American manufacturing establishment of all the railroads in the United States, about seven times the net worth of all the banks, and some 48 times the expenditures of the federal government. It is no wonder that US slaveholders, one of the wealthiest group of people in the 19th century world, were willing to go to war against their countrymen, to die to preserve their way of life. And lest our children never know out of fear that this history is divisive, the majority of this nation's presidents were indeed wealthy slave owners. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, James Monroe, Andrew Jackson, John Tyler, James Polk, and Zachary Taylor. Two of the nation's founding chief justices, John Marshall and Roger Taney, also counted among them. Slavery is not aberration in the American story. It is the quintessential American story. No other republic in the world depended as heavily or for so long on slave labor for its economic power, and no other nation has reaped the rewards as handsomely as this country. Every year, America celebrates Holocaust Remembrance Day. In 2012, President Obama, who has convened these annual celebrations over the course of his two terms, said this, we must tell our children, but more than that, we must teach them. Because remembrance without resolve is a hollow gesture. Awareness without change, with, I'm sorry, awareness without action changes nothing. In this sense, never again is a challenge to us all to pause and to look within. Since it is not okay to teach our children to deny the Jewish Holocaust, then why is it okay in far too many schools and homes to deny the centrality of slavery to the American story? The transatlantic sl slavery experience changed the course of history. It was a product of a historical moment that witnessed the rise of global capital. In this case, the market for human beings, gold, sugar, rum, cotton, and so on. Slavery cannot slip into the dark recesses of our memories because it's too painful, or we worry that our children will lose hope for the future. It is what made this nation rich. It is part of our DNA. Too often, as a consequence of our ignorance of our past, change and progress have been short-lived and history forgotten. How many, for example, sit here today having never heard of Rainey or Revels, Lynch or Bruce? How many can truly talk with any authority on Reconstruction's demise? Indeed, only as of January 12th has the nation for the first time created a national monument to the Reconstruction era. Under President Obama, now Beaufort, South Carolina, the home of Robert Smalls, the great anti-slavery activist who stole a Confederate war vessel, delivered it to the US Navy in the opening days of the Civil War. One of the first places that established black independence land ownership, established the Penn School, which to this day continues to educate a place that Dr. King himself sought sustenance and encouragement. 